With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out. Because your membership is packed with perks. For $1 down and $24.99 a month, you'll get perks like access to any of our 2,400 clean and spacious locations. Bring your friend anytime and both work out with tons of equipment that'll give you that big fitness energy. Relax in the Black Card Spa and more. Work out and perk out with the PF Black Card. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Join the Judgment Free Zone today. Deal ends Thursday, August 10th. See Home Club for details. Holy Green Dr. Moon Lawyer, Spectators. Clicking play on this week's episode of Spectales may have just been the smartest decision you've made in the last 60 seconds. I'm your featherless cap host, Jake, alongside the two-time bearded Olympic silver medalist, Jesus. If you ain't first, you're last. Am I right, Jesus? Look, man, I always get crap about that. Silver medal... But I'm just going to put this out there. I didn't say this. There's people saying this. There was performance enhancing or beard enhancing things out there. Mine is all natural, just so you know. So Those sons of beardless mothers, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. Exactly. They, they had to cheat, lie. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. For all you first-time listeners out there, thank you and welcome to the show. Spec Tales is a comic book podcast that has collectors and creators What's your grail tale? Each week we explore new stories about the comic book grails we love, the epic journeys behind how they were obtained, and how they inspired new creativity. We also dive into some comic book speculation and how, as collectors, we can help the hobby pay for itself. We'd also like to thank all the returning listeners out there. We have a blast collecting grails with all of you, and we appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, we wouldn't do this without you guys. We appreciate you guys, and we hope you're enjoying these really cool grail tales that we're providing you as much as we are. If you'd like to support the show and the content we create, please consider tossing us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or subscribing to our Patreon for $3.99 per month. We deliver bonus content every month for the cost of an extra comic on your poll list. Check out the link in the show notes or search Spectales Podcast over on Patreon.com. This week, we spoke to staff writer at ComicBook.com and co-host of the Phase Zero podcast, Jenna Anderson. And I'd love to tell you all about the conversation and her grail tale, but I don't want to spoil it for you. <clears throat> Two grail tales. <laughs> uh, all right, sir, spoils a lot. I'm going to go ahead and stop you right there. They're going to have to listen to the whole show if they want to find out a little bit more. <laughs> So convert all your crypto to chocolate syrup to stay liquid, and remember to avoid the purple stuff in the fridge. This is episode 45. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Do you think we need one more? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. You think we need one more? Objection, calls for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea! All right, we'll get one more. <laughs> Spectre, a comic book podcast with Jake and Jesus. Welcome back again, all you spectators, and thank you for joining us for the latest episode of Spectales. This week, Jesus and I are incredibly excited, or maybe it's better said, savagely excited, to introduce our next guest. She is a staff writer at ComicBook.com and host of the ComicBook.com Marvel podcast, Phase Zero. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only Jenna Anderson. Jenna, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. That intro just made me feel like I'm I'm like in WrestleMania. I'm about to walk out. I feel like the coolest person in the world. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, I get excited to start this show every time. So yeah, I, I got uh, Jake, you know, bringing me out to the Chicago Bulls music from the '90s on my phone, so that every every time he calls me, that's what I hear, and I just get excited about it. Perfect. Well, he has to get pumped up before he gets on the phone with me because this energy is 100 percent of the time. <laughs> exactly exactly there's no it's just zero or a hundred and it's usually a hundred with Jake <laughs> well enough about me Jenna let's talk more about you <laughs> <laughs> Jenna I actually we got to get a little bit of your origin story so I've listened to your podcast a lot and I love a lot of the work that you do on comicbook.com but I want to know how did you sort of get to the position you have there how did you get there Oh, gosh. So 
just in terms of being a nerd and everything, that was the thing that had it feels like for as long as I could remember. But then it really started like forming in high school and college and stuff. It was like my personality was always like becoming nerd stuff. And like in college, I would run a lot of Tumblr blogs dedicated to like comics and superheroes and stuff like that. And then in my actually my senior year of college, um, I saw a job posting at comicbook.com. And it was <laughs> this is a very long story, but it was just after the passing of Carrie. Fisher. And I was like, I'm going to keep like Carrie Fisher in my mind. She always was like, just go for it. Like stay afraid, but do it anyway. So I was like, I'm going to apply for this job at comic book and just see what happens. And then I actually got the job, which was unbelievably cool. So I started there while I was in college and then right out of college. And I've been there ever since. So, and have been a loyal fan of comics and superheroes and everything for as long as I could remember. Oh, clearly. Uh, and I, I don't think we can get by any further without bringing up the absolute wall behind you <laughs> of Funko Pops uh, that you have amassed. Like that you look yeah. like you're actually broadcasting from a store. Like you <laughs> you have so many there. It's like you're actually in a Funko Pop shop right now that you've just closed down. Is that yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it feels like that sometimes. Yeah. The, the, like I like I told you guys before we started, this is not even all of them. This is just maybe like two thirds of them that I was like, I wanted these in the background to look very nice when I was on Zooms and stuff. And yeah, it, for anyone who listens to Phase Zero regularly, they're always seeing the pops. They're always in the comments being like, when are you going to give us a pop tour? I want to see what new pops you have. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, it could take like three hours with the amount that I have, but I'll gladly do it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, pop quiz. Oh, pun intended. Uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite? Oh, gosh. Um, Just one, though. You can't name them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, like, the very first one that I got, which was the Winter Soldier, like, Bucky from the Winter Soldier movie. Oh, um, literally the very first one that I got. And I was like, I just, I love Bucky. I'm going to get this. And then it just start, it just snowballed from there of getting so many. And that one is, is now worth a lot of money, which also helps, too. And it just makes it even more <laughs> precious. But, yeah, I, I love him. Oh, nice. That's a, good one. That's a good one. Hey, Zeus, how many do you, do you have any Funko Pops? Yeah, I probably have like, I don't know, 20, 25. I would say that my favorite was, uh, well, actually, I have two. I, I get to cheat. I have two. <laughs> my favorite, I have a, a special, I guess, Target edition one of Doc Holiday from Tombstone. Oh, I nice. think it's pretty cool. Nice. And then I have the uh, the Zoltar Genie or, or Machine <laughs> from Big. <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> uh, I think those are cool. So I think those are my favorite. Well, I'm going to be, uh, I'm uh, admitting something here. I have zero <laughs> wow. Funko Pops. Oh, I don't man. own you're any. Not, you're not a real nerd or comic collector. <laughs> no, I haven't sorry. graduated. No, yeah. I got to take your card. I'm, <laughs> I'm, well, I never had the card. I'm just an aspiring nerd. That's what I, that's what I tell my wife. <laughs> Uh, and no, I'm just joking, man. We're not gatekeeping here, man. Oh, no. it's it's all right. I, my <laughs> son doesn't have one either, which he and I both collect. And he's more the the toys. I've always been more the comics. He's been more the toys. And he doesn't even have a Funko Pop. And wow. so that's something that I don't know. Maybe we should. Him and I need to have a, a long discussion about that. About why we don't. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole, man. It's a rabbit it hole. Is. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's not waste too much more time. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. For all you first time listeners out there, uh, thank you, first of all, for listening. Uh, we have three basic segments on this show. We always start every episode off with recent pickups. This is something we've recently read or picked up like a collectible. Then we go into the Grail Tales segment where we will ask Jenna here to talk to us about her comic book Grail and what makes it so special. And then we close out every episode with comic book speculation because a lot of us are collectors and we like to help the hobby pay for itself. And sometimes that can be in selling and, uh, and buying new comics. I mean, I buy most of my comics on the back of selling a different comic. So that's, that's how, uh, that's how it works for us anyway. So, uh, as long as that works for everybody here, which I hope it does, uh, Hey Zeus, please don't say anything. No, no, it does not <laughs> for, 40 something episodes in and no, Jake, it does not work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the first segment then. Recent pickups. The recent pickup segment. Hey, Zeus, you always lead us off. You're up. All right, man. So I recently picked this up a few weeks ago. 
uh, and I'm behind. I think I don't know. I would say ninety to ninety five percent of of comic book readers are behind on their <laughs> on their reading. They have a, a stack. So I finally caught up on this uh, one and two of Spider Punk. So I got Spider Punk one, and then Spider Punk two recently came out too, which is pretty cool. And Spider Punk two is also a small specs first appearance of a different tax, Taskmaster. Um, it's written by Cody Ziegler. Um, I don't know, Noack, Mason, and Charolampidis are on this too as far as lettering and colors. It's really cool. It's really different. It's a new team that they're building. He's calling it the Spider Band, uh, which is Kamala Khan, uh, a different Captain America, which is, I think, uh, Morningstar. I forgot his first name. Is it Carl? I think it's Carl. And then also Riri, but it's a different Riri as well. So it's a really cool read. Um I mean, it's just comic book, spider punk, Spider Man, young young kid going through it, and just new adventures in it. So they're 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 setting up the kingpin, I think, uh, which is pretty interesting. I want to see it, uh, but it was fun. It was a fun read, nonetheless. Spider Punk number one and two, recent, uh, some cool uh, variants on there. I got some variants too, which I think are pretty cool as well. I'll show this black and white one. With oh, that is cool! It. Wow. Yeah, so pretty cool. Nice. Uh, Spider Punk number two, I recommend it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining and fun. That's something I haven't read. Although I'm, I'll be honest, and and the listeners probably won't be surprised by this, but I, the modern Marvel, a lot of I, I almost prefer reading the older stuff, but I get into the the independent stuff more than I do the modern Marvel. So I'm not I, caught up on Spider Man for sure. You know, I knew you would say that. I knew you'd say get off my lawn. I knew you'd say, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> but, off my but, porch. I, 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 <laughs> look, so I, I kept this back because I was waiting for you to say that. But this is one of the the most recent Marvel books I've read, and I can also tell you, like, I don't know, the vernacular, the 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 way it's written is, I don't know, really close to how people now talk. I guess, like, the 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 words that are said, the the slang, the terminology is very modern and very real time, I guess you could say. So uh, it's the first time I've come across that, right? It's the first time I've, I, at least for me. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's a lot newer and, and I can see that Jake where it's not, I, and I won't say it's for everybody, you know, not, it's not for everybody. It's a lot different. I, I've, I've seen some blowback on these already uh, online from the first issue that came out, which is, you know, at least for me, unjustified, because I think it's still a cool story. It's still, I mean, it's, it, it skews for a younger reader, but it's still fun. You know, it's a still fun read. So, uh, but yeah, I, I figured Jake would say that. <laughs> I'm not old and I like <laughs> modern writers. It's, that's not the point. It has nothing to do with, with that or modernizing our characters. It, it really just becomes, I've just gotten a lot more into the darker horror type of, uh, writing. So Fair stop, enough. get off my porch, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I do main spider punk whenever I play the Spider-Man PS4 game. So that's very good to know that like the comic that that newer comic is good because I, I love spider punk. I just haven't gotten to read that series yet. But yeah, that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Awesome. Pretty cool book. Yeah. Nice. All right, Jenna, would you like to go next? Absolutely. So um, I was looking at the stack of stuff that I bought this week, one of which I am going to talk about later. Um, but the the one thing that I do want to talk about is the most recent issue of Batwoman. Uh, I've actually been reviewing for comics.com and I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it so far. But like this issue to me kind of crystallized it. It's like, I am loving everything that this run is doing. Um, and so it's written by Tinny Howard. And I'm trying to pull up the information here. But basically, this is the start of like a new ish arc where Selena and Harley Quinn are like going on a girls weekend together because Selena just dealt with um, some stuff with Black Mask and Gotham City. And she's like, I need a little weekend away. And so it's the two of them hanging out. It is, in my opinion, like one of the best examinations of their relationship that I have seen in a long time. And then it just kind of snowballs into like all of these very fun, vibrant, colorful sequences. You can tell that it's very clearly inspired by the Birds of Prey movie, which I you can see behind me. I have like multiple pieces of art for that movie. I am the I am an apostle for that movie. So I'm very happy that that is being realized in the comics. And then on the very end at the very last page is the canonical first appearance of Red Claw, who appeared in the Batman the Animated Series and is now finally in the main canon. Um, so that was kind of a cool little thing on top of it. Like the story is also extremely extremely good and then at the end you get oh here's a character that actually being canonized for the first time in a very long time so mm. yeah that was catwoman number 43 interesting that's very intriguing because those two characters 
side by side, the way that I like Selena Kyle to me is like a surgical knife, like precision. <laughs> and Harley Quinn is a battering ram, just <laughs> just ramming into everything and everything. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's part of the fun of it. And then even like there's moments where it gets very almost romantic between the two of them, but in a way that doesn't mm-hmm. feel forced or gratuitous or like a man is writing it. Like you can tell having <laughs> Tony Howard on the book, it's like the 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 way that it's being represented is very true to life and true to like how someone like Selena Kyle would see someone like Harley Quinn. So yeah, the dynamic mm-hmm. of it is just delightful. It's so much fun. That sounds that sounds like more fun than Spider Punk. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Jake, are, are we really going to do this right now? Uh, Let's, do I, wow. Let's do it. Let's do it. You open I, the can of worms. <laughs> you open the can of worms. When is the last time you purchased a DC book to read? Uh, uh, here, uh, hey, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I've got it right here. Wow! <laughs> Today, that was the answer. Just, I I actually just paused the the audio here. I went to my LCS. I picked up the book. Uh, no, that's great segue, Jesus. It's almost like you knew what was coming, but you really didn't actually. Uh, and that is why I am going to start with, I've got two and I'm going to start with, uh, issue number seven of a righteous thirst for vengeance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this series we've taught, so we talked to, uh, the artist Andre Lima Araujo, a good friend of the show. He was so much fun to have on. Uh, written by uh, Rick Remender. And okay, so when we talked to Andre, I mean, it was just the first issue. And he even said it was going to be slow paced. He said that they were going to take their time. And I will tell you, it is paying off. If you didn't get on this series right away, you're going to want to jump on it now. It is just incredible. The drama that is. So I read a lot of horror stuff. I would say this is not horror. This is completely, this is edge of your seat dramatic. This is anticipation. This is like jump scares in a comic book where you don't like, <laughs> where you're, oh, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that frightened me. Uh, there, But it's, it's incredible. So I, I'm probably not doing it justice as far as describing it, but everybody knows I'm terrible at that anyway. So let's not worry about it. Uh, <laughs> just go out and read it. But to the DC book, and this one is extremely enjoyable, but I happen to be a big, so I've always been a fan of Batman, but now I am slowly, I'm not going to fully, you know, I'm not going to fully get behind the character yet, slowly becoming a Superman fan. And that is World's Finest, number three. Uh, This one, this series is really growing on me. Uh, Great writer. uh, Mr. Mark Wade uh, is involved in this one, and this this series is is going in a lot of new directions. That it, it, I guess I'm not going to act as if I know all of the history with Superman and Batman. Uh, my favorite Batman is New Fifty Two, and then I get into the Dark Knight and all of those. But I, from a Batman series standpoint, again, I am not the most read Batman fan. But I tend to lean more to that character. This series is really getting into a lot of the the other characters with regards to Robin and the uh, the other surrounding characters around Batman and Superman. Anyway, uh, it's it's really good. The action is awesome, and I I can't help but I wanted to pull this up. I love when Superman flies around with Batman and he's just holding him. <laughs> Anytime I get that, I just really enjoy that. <laughs> uh, who's the artist on that, man? Uh, Mora. Dan, Isn't it Dan, Dan Mora? Mora? Dan Mora. Yeah, Dan yeah. Mora. Yeah. yeah, Dan Mora. Paul talked about that, saying that Dan Mora is doing two books and one of them was World Fi- World's Finest. And also, you know, Mark Wade, friend of the show, was talking about um, some of the different things that he wanted to do on World's Finest uh, in our show. And from what I've heard and from what I read, I haven't read it. You know, I'm not a big uh, Superman fan either. Oh, get um, off my but I, porch! <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do need to, I do need to read that one uh, just because of, of what uh, Mark Wade was saying on the show that, you know, he wasn't going to do it unless he was going to do something different. And from what you're saying too, it's it's pretty different. So, is it worth it, Jake? Should I pick I, it up? I, I think it's worth it. The one thing I would say is knowing 
knowing, uh, having met Mark Wade and knowing what I know about him, I actually feel like in some of the reviews I've read is that he is breaching new territory while also remaining true to who Superman and Batman are. So he is pulling things from the canon. Now, I'm not reading this knowing all of the background. So this is all new stuff for me, but I go online and I see people saying, oh, this is a callback or this is a callback. And I love that. I love that that's in there, even though I haven't found that yet. I'm going to have to dive deeper into some of the back catalog of those characters to really enjoy it. That Did you much say more. bat catalog? Is that, is that what, <laughs> that's what I heard. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that'll that'll do it for the recent pickup segment uh, and just in time because I was getting really, really excited for Grail Tale. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. Grail Tale. The Grail Tale segment. Now, uh, unbeknownst to the audience, Jenna gave us a little background information. Now, we don't know what the books are, but she said that when we originally asked her to be on the show, she knew exactly what book that she was going to pick. Then... She might have had a change of heart because this last week, something big happened to her. <laughs> I would not call it a change of heart. I would just call it, you wouldn't expect this because I host a Marvel podcast, but like, I love DC. Like, I, I always have such a fondness for DC. It is, it is just a completely different like side of my brain almost compared to talking about Marvel. But so um, it is basically, I'm going to talk about the grails for me for my two favorite characters across both companies. And so the book that I was going to bring initially prior to this week, is um adventure comics number 418 which is a bronze age issue it is um kind of not one that would be on a lot of people's radar but for me it is because it is the um oh wait actually 417 is the one that i'm talking about but 417 is the first solo story that alex toth drew and wrote for black canary and black canary is my favorite character and possibly all of media um i am currently in the process of reading every single appearance that she has ever been in and these this two-part story across 417 and 418 is my like end all be all it is one of my favorite stories that i have read of her um alex toth is in my mind one of the most underrated creators that the comics industry has ever burst this is technically the second time that he's worked with Black Canary because he inked a story of hers much, much earlier in like a team up book. But this is like the first time that he was really doing a story just with her. And it is the perfect blend of where comics were in the 70s and also where Black Canary was in the 70s. This was like in the middle of and towards the end of the hard traveling heroes era where she's going with Green Arrow and Green Lantern and going across the country. And um, this story kind of addresses where her status quo is as a person and also addresses the fact that like she doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. And so you see her kind of considering joining a position at a like martial arts school and then getting sucked into this criminal conspiracy that ultimately leads her to Catwoman. Um, and it is just beautifully drawn, beautifully written. Like Alex Toth does so many things with her that are just very beautiful and unique and dynamic to look at. Um, and just the stamp that he puts on this character, literally in the span of two issues in this small backup story is just unparalleled to me. Um, like, I love this story so much. I have like a panel from it painted on a jean jacket that's hanging in my <laughs> closet. I'm like considering getting the canary symbol that he drew for her as like a tattoo at some point like Alex Toth is one of those people that like I can evangelize about until the end of time but like his work particularly on these stories is just unparalleled to me um so that's my first one do you guys want to <laughs> comment at all before I go into the second yeah part? yeah can okay. we please yeah um but yeah so like I mean okay so <laughs> and then so then my second part my second grail Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. You sorry. Didn't want to ask. Okay, yeah, so sorry. Go ahead. Jesus, go ahead, you go first. You go yeah, first. Go ahead. Well, first, <laughs> We're uh, the light. <laughs> that uh, that cover uh -huh. is pretty gnarly, man. Yes. Like, I'm looking at it right now. You have, because it's it's like a Supergirl story as well, yeah. right? Like, it has, uh, what is it called? Uh, men, are, men are but slaves. All men are but slaves. And it has, like, a bunch of men in, in like, uh, shackles. And then it has women pointing, uh, I don't know, like, some space rays at him and then supergirl just coming in and punching a couple of oh, no wait it's 418 is that oh 418 yeah yeah so there's a dragon on this cover um but yeah 
Oh, nice. I totally got Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinda, okay. Yeah. So it is 418. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to interject here and say, okay. when you said that you had a panel, uh huh, custom, custom drawn, right? <laughs> oh, I drew it myself. It was you like, I'm bored. I'm going to paint. I'm just going to paint this on the back of a jean jacket. Okay. Um, yeah. So when yeah. you were saying that you had a panel, like my brain was immediately like, oh, she got some art for her wall. No, uh -huh. on the back of a jean jacket, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm sure you yeah. wear everywhere, right? This is um, I the weather in Chicago has not been jean jacket weather, so I haven't really had an excuse to wear it yet. But I'm very much looking forward. Oh, to it. damn the windy city! Yeah, it's robbing everybody of the yeah. joy of seeing that. And I'm imagining in my head that it is pretty comic accurate, correct? Um, well, to an extent, I'm not going to compliment my painting skills. I'm definitely not a painter. It's just something I do for fun occasionally. But like the way that Toth just like draws his lines and stuff, it is pretty easy to translate if you if you want to try to draw it yourself. But but yeah, he like because I'll just show you the, the sequence that is the jean jacket panel. So it's at the bottom of this page here. Oh. Um, for anyone listening in audio, this is going to be so bad. Um, but like, it's the the final panel over here where she's like actually in costume as the Black Canary. I was like, I'm going to just paint this on a jacket. Oh, nice. uh, and then weirdly, so um, the second book that I'm going to be talking about has has a thing that also kind of has to do with this. But I will I will mention that at a later time. Oh. Um, but but yeah. So I like I said, I'm just an Alex Toth super fan, and this story is just like the perfect distillation of it. So. Well, uh, I re with regards to that grail, mm -hmm. I, now the one that you're showing us, and I think everybody might have kind of figured it out, this is not a graded book. This is just a yes. raw copy that you keep. Yeah. Uh, and as far as comic books go, it's not mm -hmm. the most valuable book on the shelf no. by any means, but I love that you are tied to it for so many great reasons. It connected to you. Would you say that this is the type of book that you had to chase down? Is it one that you intend to try to look for in a really pristine grade? Would that do anything for you? Or is that anything that you're interested in? I'm not like a huge graded person with my comics. Like I usually, if I'm going to spend money on comics, I at least want like a somewhat readable copy. Mm -hmm. Like I want one that like, I'm not necessarily about to grade my books. This is the type of book where I have considered buying multiple copies over the years. Like mm -hmm. I will, my boyfriend and I will be looking through back issues at a store and I'll see this and then it'll be like, I know I own this, but like, what if I get another one? Cause I just, <laughs> I just, I love it so much that it's one of those books that like I would not mind having multiples in my collection. I know that this is a kind of beat up copy that I have, but it's one of those books where it's like, I, I am totally content having it be beat up as it's at least in my possession. With Black Canary, it's this weird thing with first appearances because like her very first appearance in the golden age is mm. not necessarily financially feasible. I, I dream to one day be rich enough to hopefully own a <laughs> copy of that. Don't and then all. like my boy, and then like my boyfriend owns JLA 75, which is like technically the second Black Canary's first appearance. And nice. so between the two of us it's like we we represent enough of it and i have so many other comics featuring her that i'm i'm able to but like for this one for me is like almost a first appearance in and of itself because it's like the way that toth characterizes her and draws her it is like this is a turning point for who she is as a character so for me it is like this is personally a big book did you experience this book first in that the the floppy or did you read it did you read this storyline in like a uh, omnibus or something first. Oh, I read it online and then was like, I need it to own this physically. Um, which is how I read the vast majority of stuff, unless I happen to stumble across something mm -hmm. in a store or in an omnibus. And then I'm like, I know I want to own this as a floppy. Um, but yeah, usually online by and large. Nice. Hey Zeus, any other follow-ups? Uh, well, like you were mentioning the first appearance of Black Canary, and that's from Flash Comics number 86 yes. from 1947. Um, low end, you're looking at around $2,000 just to get into that book. And then on the high end, it's about 20 grand. So, yeah, that, yeah, that does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> just just go ahead and crush her dreams more jesus how about that well no it, i mean oh, it's just what a great co-host you just the same. crushing it's the more, hopes and dreams of the guests hey, every week here know. on people, spectators people give out aoks all the time man in our community so relax. like i said it is like a pie in the sky aspiration of like i dream to one day be able to financially afford that book but if but, i don't i totally understand but that's uh you know that's that a little bit further into that conversation is what we had that conversation with Paul as well about 
if you're a DC comics collector, like a lot of these books are, are just so expensive because they've mm-hmm. been around for so long and they came out in the golden age and they're so limited. And I mean, you're, you're talking about what, 80, 80 year old comic books, man, yes. Some, somewhere around their 60, 70, 80 year old books and, and they're hard to come by. So if you're, if you're a DC fan or you have a, a, um, a DC character that you love, it's going to be difficult to get the first appearance for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the biggest knock on DC most of the time, really. Uh, like there is, there are kind of like this swath of characters that I wear in the eighties and nineties books that still do have first appearances that are kind of worth picking up. Like I know my boyfriend has been trying to get a lot of like Aquaman supporting characters and like Arian and all of that kind of era because it's like this is a little more financially feasible and it's something that could eventually one day end up in a movie or something. And so, but yeah, if you love like a golden or silver age DC character, you kind of have to settle for <laughs> the books that they were in that aren't necessarily their first appearance. Yeah. And it'd be interesting if somebody were to speculate on a silver age Age DC characters first appearance in this episode. Oh God. <laughs> subtle, Jake. Very subtle. Wow. <laughs> I'm curious to find out who it is. That's that's called a tease in the biz. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jenna. Sorry, I'm sorry to do that no too. Worries. What uh, I am, I am truly excited about yeah. what what's next. What's the what's the other book you've got? So, so this is one that it was like I literally got this this week, and I knew if I did not mention this on this show, it would be a missed opportunity. Given especially how you introduced me on this show. Um, so, so I, it is no secret I'm a fan of She Hulk. Um, I am very much eagerly looking forward to the Disney Plus show. I'm a massive fan of Tatiana Maslany. Um, And so I have been eyeing and window shopping a She-Hulk first appearance for a very, very, very long time. And as soon as rumbling started that there was maybe going to be a trailer dropping this past week, I um, bit the bullet and I got the first appearance. (laughs) Nice. Congrats. um, Yeah. So it is now going to stay in this in in this little protective case for the foreseeable future. I feel bad even looking at it sometimes because I'm like, oh my God, I actually own this. <laughs> I am not the type of person who like spends a lot of money on a book. Like I I am usually the type of like, oh my God, I randomly found so-and-so's first appearance in like a bin and nobody even noticed that this is a book that could be a value. And that's much more how I shop. But with this one, it was like, this is the exception because I love this character so much. And I knew once the trailer dropped, I was like, there are going to be so many other people looking for this book. It is going to be next to impossible for me to get a copy. So I was like, I'm going to this and hopefully not regret it <laughs> because it will be so much more worth it. Um, but yeah, so I, I have Savage She-Hulk number one, which is the first appearance of She-Hulk. Um, there's so much I could say about this book. It is not on the like personal intimate level as when I was talking about the Alex Toth Black Canary story, but it is just so perfect and such a perfect way of introducing She-Hulk into the world. Um, one of the things that surprised me most about the trailer for the Disney Plus series was how much they are taking from the Savage She-Hulk run, because I expected it to be very much more into the John Byrne sort of era, mm-hmm. or even the more modern like Charles Soule sort of, sort of stuff. But so seeing them pull a lot of elements from that was very surprising to me, because I also have just been rereading the entire like her entire history, and so just having the Savage stuff very fresh in my brain. It's like, oh my god, I can tell exactly Exactly where all of this is that you're doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it is it is just such a perfect and such a fun way of like introducing her status quo. And I am incredibly excited to see how they deal with her origin story within the TV show, because based on the trailer, it seems similar, but it also seems a little bit different. And I know within the context of the MCU, they always do something different. And so I am just personally very curious to see how this translates on screen. And I'm just extremely happy to own it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, that's a that's an awesome pickup and that was uh the right time to do it jake and i always talk about if if you're using the hobby to pay for itself the the best time to maximize that return is as soon as the first trailer drops because that's like the peak of what you're going to be able to get unless it's like a bigger character or, or they announce a second movie or what have you or whatever like it's still going to go down it ebbs and flows but the peak is that first trailer so you know, kudos to you on getting before it dropped because I, I mean, I have a couple that I'm I'm uh, gonna be selling, but I don't know when. But I have a couple that I'm trying to sell, um, and I was waiting for it. And sure enough, as soon as that happened, they kind of went up there. And uh, I just I, I don't have time to do it right now, but mm-hmm. that's a great pickup if you did it right before it came out. So again, good job. Well, and actually, that that was one of your. Did you use that as a recent pickup when you I, at one point, uh, Jenna? 
Jesus got the entire first run. Oh wow! Uh, out of some guy's trunk for what? Oh didn't gosh. you spend like less than a hundred dollars on it? <laughs> oh, no, it, was, it, it was okay. So and I, and I and I talked about it on our newsletter too, mm-hmm. uh, which is on Patreon. Shout out to Patreon if you guys want to join and check out the newsletter. But uh, I, I was looking for one just the same reason. You know, I like She Hulk. It's a it's an affordable key in the in the Bronze Age, nineteen eighty, and it's a cool cover. You know, it's mm-hmm. a really cool cover. I really like it. So I've been looking for it, um, and I, I found one on Instagram. I messaged a guy, found out he's actually from here, from Houston as well. He said, let's meet up at a Starbucks. So we meet up at a Starbucks, and he's like, hey, I have it here for you. I didn't really haggle with him. He was a nice guy. His name's Ben. And he's like, hey, man, well, since you're buying it, and I think I bought a Fantastic 466 from him too, or 67. I forgot which one it was. He's like, here, man, I'm just going to throw in this whole run for you. And he threw in the whole She-Hulk run, including, like, Two, I think number nine is probably one of the hardest ones to get, which is a black mm-hmm. cover. He threw two, two of those. There's a couple multiples in there, and it was just the whole run. It was crazy. It was, I mean, Jake was like, "There's no way." I, went, I don't know, man. He just threw it in, so I was like, "I'm a, okay." I still can't believe that happened to you. <laughs> but back to uh, the trailer, though. So, mm-hmm. so I was, I was hoping you were going to bring up She Hulk. If you weren't, I was going to, of course, <laughs> uh, simply because you are, you know like the premier She-Hulk knowledge base online, right? Like you, aren't you the <laughs> preeminent uh, I expert? would never call myself that, but I greatly appreciate anyone who <laughs> thinks of me that way. I know my Twitter notifications, the day that the trailer dropped were just, I, I could not keep up with it. The amount of people who were reaching out to me. And then we're just messaging of like, I need Jenna to recommend comics. I need Jenna to do a breakdown of the trailer. It was like, I got you. It's time. There will be like three months until the show comes out. Like just... Let me let me like take a second to and actually watch the trailer first. Well, so, and you yeah. did a breakdown of the trailer uh, mm-hmm. on I on did. YouTube, right? Or was it Twitch? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was on YouTube, and then and then on our episode the day after, I had talked about it for way too long. So. Yes, actually, and I would highly recommend that episode for anybody interested in in learning more. But I and not to to tread over some of the stuff you've already talked about, but with regards to uh, She Hulk, the trailer and the upcoming series, I was actually going to try to ask you what you are most excited about, not just from the trailer, but for the series. What are you most excited to see? Because you have more knowledge about She Hulk than anybody else in this room. And mm-hmm. I'd love to know mm-hmm. what you're looking forward to most. And are you going to be disappointed if you don't actually get that? <laughs> See, my, my, like the, the things I'm excited for, I know realistically I'm going to get in one way or another. So I, I know, I know this show can do no wrong in my eyes. Like there, there is a lot that it would have to not do for it to not meet my expectations. Because honestly, at this point, the one thing that I expected her to do more of in the trailer that she didn't was break the fourth wall, because I know mm-hmm. obviously the John Byrne era kind of made that infamous. And like, that is a thing that is uniquely kind of associated with her as a character predating Deadpool and everybody else who has done it ever since. And so I, expected the trailer to lean into that a little bit more and it didn't do that but I know that is a thing that has to happen in the show it has been heavily rumored that it's going to happen to the point where she's apparently going to even like yell at Kevin Feige at one point which I'm very excited to see um so I I know she I know that's going to happen I know I'm probably going to be happy um even purely beyond that like beyond just being a she-hulk Seeing Tati Maslany in a comedy role and in a superhero role is something that I was a massive fan of Orphan Black. That was my entire personality the entire time that show was on the air. And so (laughs) getting to see her not have to be this I'm all of these clones who are being hunted by an evil conspiracy and everything's super dire. There's still moments of levity, but it's also very like intense a lot of the time. Having her go from that to being Jen Walters, this person who is very confident, very sure of herself as She-Hulk and gets to really have fun in the superhero space, that is just going to be unbelievable. It is one of those things. I'm a massive fan of her and I'm a massive She-Hulk fan, but I never in a million years fan cast her as She-Hulk. Mm-hmm. And so the day that it, that she initially got cast was like one of the best days ever. It was like, this <laughs> never occurred to me in a million years because there were all these rumors of like, oh, Alison Brie is going to be She-Hulk mm-hmm. or like somebody along the lines of her. And I was totally setting my expectations for that and then this just absolutely exceeded them but yeah so then that and then the savage era and the sensational she hulk era with john byrne what makes them so much fun is just seeing her interact with the bottom of the barrel kind of d-list 
super villains and random side characters and stuff like that. Like it's a thing that she has uniquely been associated with from the start. And I know with the idea of her being a superhero lawyer, that is realistically going to fall into place. We saw Frogman in the trailer, which I still cannot believe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like getting to see all of these weird D list F list characters in the MCU that like would not have any business being in there five or so years ago is going to be like, that's something I'm excited to see to begin with, but then having it happen in a she Hulk show is going to make me just over the moon. I, I do think that there is something about the, the MCU shows, TV shows that before every time you had an MCU movie, everybody was so judgmental about what villain they selected. In fact, that was one of the biggest things that people hated about Thor too. They, they hated the evil elves and they were like, Oh, Thor has so many better villains. Why are you doing this? And now because we're getting so much content, there is an opportunity to really dive into some of just the, the most (laughs) smallest, (laughs) I don't know, insignificant villains that Marvel has to offer, but now make them fun. And I agree with you. I think that that is something that this show could really dive into. Uh, I, you know, I, I I don't mean to, to bypass how fun she Hulk and the show is going to be, but I genuinely think that there are so many tentacles this show could have connections right Mm -hmm. Uh, into other characters we're already seeing connections to shang chi uh which uh just based on your guys's last episode i needed to let you know that also (laughs) i agree is the best phase four (laughs) that whole debate came out of nowhere that was unprompted (laughs) and we had so much we needed to cover on that show so then we started the debate of like what was the best movie so far at phase four and i was like oh god i'm gonna have to shoot from the hip here (laughs) like i'm not like i still stand by my answer that it was spider-man no way home but um but yeah um but no i totally agree with like the the d-list villains of it and i think the temples of it because like the official synopsis of show confirmed that benedict wong is gonna be in it playing wong which i know everyone loves just seeing him dominate in phase four like it feels like he's appearing in everything which he deserves um so it is going to be really kind of cool and crazy seeing how much this show can kind of ebb and flow in and out of everything yeah i can't wait yeah i can't wait for the fourth wall stuff i also i think you guys mentioned in the in, in the, the show too in your show the um about how it connects and and it not being like um in game like you it can't be in game like secret invasion can't be in game as well but how breaking the fourth wall and the levity like being not being as dark and not being as brooding i guess you would say and just you know having some fun with these characters in phase four and maybe into phase five and how i think is needed you can't always be down you can't always like have you know the the fate of the world as as the stakes maybe it's just storytelling maybe it's what happened during the blip because i agree with you guys saying that this probably has something to do with the blip because mm-hmm. before the blip or during the blip because of, of the hulk and how his arm is and i'm I, I that was one of the first things i picked up on was how's his arm okay like how did that happen like so i don't know i, I think it's going to be good i'm excited about it i want to see the fourth wall being broken as well uh, i think that's always a lot of fun and maybe it sets up also deadpool going forward too you know so well, it may be kind of a playbook for how they may use Deadpool mm-hmm. uh, in the next time around to see that again. And and I do think, I don't want to, I'm not going to suggest that they're going to go this far in the show, but She-Hulk has plenty of connections to uh, the Fantastic Four that mm-hmm. I don't think can be ignored. I think that that's, mm-hmm. that, that I would love to see even the slightest hint of... Uh, Fantastic Four in this because I I I I always enjoyed when she was a part of the Fantastic Four as well. I completely agree. I, I was I'm planning on writing a piece for a comic book that is basically arguing that of like I really want her to appear in that movie. And it, I know it's the thing of like that movie technically doesn't have a director right now. Like we have no idea yeah. where they're going with it and how long that's going to take and stuff. But I I would love to see like her and Agatha Harkness because those are the two characters that have already been in Phase mm-hmm. Four at that point, but have these ties to the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. I think it would be so much fun, even if it's just for a scene, even even if it's on par of like how much Daredevil was in Spider Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. Wait, like, that's spoiler. For is enough yeah well <laughs> the movie came out so long ago i i am so sorry if i'm joking i'm totally joking <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I, I would love for, even if it's just a scene with her in the Fantastic Four, because I know that movie is going to have to introduce so much, mm-hmm. but if there is even just one way to have, oh, we need a lawyer for something, here's Jed Walters. Like that would, that would make me super happy. Yeah, like uh, taking what what uh, Daredevil did, where he catches a brick and have her catch like you know half a building, and, and then she'd be like, "I'm a really good lawyer," or you know, it's a, "I'm an even better lawyer." Uh, that would be so good. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, that's pretty awesome, though. I'm really glad to to hear that you got that, and I'm super glad that you brought that on the show to talk about it. Because, like I said, I was yeah. going to talk about the She Hulk trailer with you anyway. So, <laughs> great segue. That is, yeah. You yeah. guys are the first people I've told, like outside of my boyfriend. Like I haven't even posted oh, it on social cool. media yet because I've been busy this weekend and I got it on like Friday afternoon. And so I was like, I will wait and save this for the show, and then nice. Twitter Thank can you. get it after the fact. So. Thank you. Breaking news. Breaking news. You heard it here breaking first, news. guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that nicely will lead us right into our final segment. Speculation. The speculation segment. As we have mentioned a couple of times already, we like to help the hobby pay for itself. So we're going to talk about some comics or some books we feel like might be undervalued right now. And hey, Zeus. Why don't you kick things off? All right, man. Uh, going with my continued theme of zigging and zagging or zigging when people are zagging, or I don't know how that goes, but, you know, I'm looking over here while people are looking somewhere else. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with this book that is seeing average averages of the 9.8 selling for $317 right now. And raw, you can get it for under... I mean, I'm looking on eBay right now. You can get it for under 40 bucks, 30 bucks in pretty decent shape. Newsstand as well. Um, the high when this when this character was really hot during one of the Disney Plus shows was uh, $757 for a 9.8. So you're talking about a $400 drop in a 9.8 when we know this character is still coming out. And I'm talking about Captain America number 323. The first appearance of what's this guy's name again? <laughs> it's uh, your spec, <laughs> John Walker, the Super Patriot, in the 25th anniversary uh, border cover with him on the front of it. Uh, yep. So we know this character's coming now. We know that what's her name, Countess Allegra Prefontaine, or <laughs> I don't know. She has a any name. version of it works at this point. Everyone just calls her Val. <laughs> yeah, uh, she built. She's building a team, and he's part of that team, right? So we're gonna see him somewhere, right? We haven't seen him come come back since uh, the Falcon and the, and the Winter Soldier. Um, so it's a big book. Whenever this show was on, Raws were going for a hundred bucks, and now you're getting them under under fifty dollars, under forty dollars, and the nine point eight at three hundred and seventeen dollars. This book is gonna pop again. Uh, this is my spec uh, for this week. Uh, I'm picking them up. I've already picked up two copies. For mad cheap raw copies, I'm probably gonna get one of them pressed and try to get graded above like a. I don't know. I think it might do nine three, nine two, nine four, somewhere around there. Did you say nine three? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I was trying to figure out how to do your okie dokie. It's an okie dokie nine three. <laughs> but uh, I I recommend this book. This book is really low right now when it shouldn't be. He's gonna be coming back, uh, big time actor too, uh, playing the role. Uh, so that's my spec for this week. I, I'm I, a huge, yeah, I'm a huge Mark Grunwald fan and he wrote that issue. Like I almost brought in one of the Squadron Supreme issues I have because that is on par like other books that I love that I own physically. But yeah, I, I love him. That is crazy that that book is so low right now after he just wasn't thing less than a year ago. That's he, wild. Yeah, he's a huge part of the what's going to happen in the MCU moving forward because he's not going away. And mm-hmm. Elaine is certainly going to use him as one of his, <laughs> her, her top... <laughs> <laughs> top agents. Anyway, I like what you're saying here. You're basically saying that everybody else is sleeping on it and, you know, listeners of Spectales need to set their alarms, wake up. Yep. Yeah, but wait, let me get these first and then y'all can y'all can pick those up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Get them now. <laughs> All right. Well, then I I'm going to I'm going to say cuz I no offense to anybody else on this podcast, I feel like I probably have the best speculation, so I'm going to hold mine for last. And it's not okay. because I think so highly of myself. It's that I just 
man, the, it's not me that's good. It's the book. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to fit my head into this podcast. Yeah. Jenna, I'm going to let it's you difficult. go second. It's difficult. I don't know if you guys know, on StreamYard, he has two, two <laughs> tiles. So we can fit. <laughs> <laughs> all right but jenna but seriously though, okay. do you have a do you have a speculation for us <laughs> okay so i i have two that i wanted to bring in one is like this could potentially be something and the other one is i we we are actually already previously mentioned something from it so my first one is um marvel team up 121 which is the first appearance of frogman as we just mentioned he is most likely in the trailer for the she hulk show it's either frogman or leapfrog which is technically frogman's dad um but this one i was looking it up on key collector before we got on here a low goes for three dollars and a high goes for 35 dollars on the, according to their database which is kind of crazy um my brother-in-law has very weird experience shopping for comics. He found this one in like a dollar bin a couple weeks ago and was like, oh my God, it's the first Frogman. And I got so jealous of him because I was like, I, I want to own this book. I am, I'm very much where I'm in the same camp as Jesus of like, I need to get a copy of this and then recommend it to everybody else because I know this is one that I want to own. Um, but yeah, so we know a version of him is most likely showing up in the show. He was in the trailer. So that one is probably going to do well. And then also on the She-Hulk front, um, if you're you're not like me and want to get Savage She-Hulk or Savage She-Hulk number one. Um, another character that has been heavily rumored to appear in the show and is also just a very fun team up that happened in She-Hulk's era is Howard the Duck. Um, and they both teamed up together across a like three issue run. It was written by Steve Gerber who is like one of the most prolific Howard the Duck people. Um, and so that began with sens Sensational She-Hulk number 14. I was just checking. the a, a high copy goes for $3 right now, which is kind of <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but honestly, I do feel like if if he is in the show, which like I know like random magazine articles and like other bits of information have heavily hinted at it, and it is a thing, there's enough comic precedent for it. I feel like if he does end up being in the She-Hulk show, these copies are gonna probably really boom. And so I'm I'm definitely picking up physical copies because I don't have any yet of these, but I feel like this might be something that once the show premieres, people are gonna be searching for. That's a fun crossover too. I, I would yeah. That's yeah, and and Gerber obviously Howard the Duck was his his baby. His he he yes. invented that character. So I think that would yeah. be that would be a fun book to own. But I, it, it's I, it's so wild. They go into like the baloney verse, which is like the <laughs> negative zone. But there's just like cut meat everywhere. Like Jen gets turned into like gray She Hulk, and it's a whole thing through the baloney verse. And like every single like issue title is like a riff on ex an existing comic crossover. Like it is just so fun just to own from a comic standpoint and just to read. And then beyond that, it is the idea of just getting the two of them in the same book. Oh, now we need the baloney verse. <laughs> Uh, we do. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And and I, I do want to just really quick comment on did you say it was your brother in law? Brother Yeah. Boyfriend's brother. Yeah. Okay. Boyfriend's brother who yeah. who actually got excited and this was pre trailer, <laughs> right? Pre trailer. <laughs> We have been Frogman. speculating and we also just love him just in general because Frogman is just one of those characters of like he like if you've been reading the current Iron Man run, he is a fixture in that. And there, it is just so much fun to see him in that. So like just the idea of like, oh, my God, it's the first Frogman. This is so great. My my boyfriend's brother, like I said, I have a whole separate story about how like about a year ago, he found a copy of Savage She-Hulk number one at an estate sale. And it was with a bunch of other random books. And he paid maybe. 15 20 dollars for the entire oh. stack <laughs> and nice. I, I i was mad at him for like a month i was like how <laughs> did you get my grail book for like two dollars basically when you divided it up with all of the books because this person at the estate sale had no idea what they had on this stack and he was able to get it so it was like oh cool i held a copy of savage shield number one this might be enough for me and then now i luckily own one paid way more than he did but i still own one <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, good for him. And, and also really good for him getting excited about uh, Frogman even before the trailer, because that's always fun, right, as well, because yeah. then, then, you know, you're really interested in, <laughs> in what it is. But I also like the fact that there are going to be a lot of new people out there who had no idea who Frogman were, who can now experience the character. Yes, so, a thousand percent. Yep. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to move right into my speculation book for this episode. As we mentioned earlier, 
that there's not a lot of DC keys in the Silver Age that are affordable, you know, first appearances of characters. There's not a lot of first appearance. I mean, there are first appearances and they're usually smaller characters, sub characters. Uh, And I'm not going to act like this is a huge character with the first appearance in the Silver Age that's really undervalued. But reading World's Finest has gotten me looking into other characters, other books. And I did see, I came across a character, I saw it, somebody had posted a photo on social media, on Instagram, I believe. And I, it was, the drawing was so unique. And I was like, who the hell is that? And why is this a thing? And it was a cross between Batman and Superman. They had come together. And so I started looking more into the character and it's apparently called composite Superman. Are you familiar? Both of you? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a half Superman, half Batman Android and is apparently quite the villain, uh, that had gave Superman and Batman a significant amount of trouble back in the sixties. Uh, the book was issued, the issue came out in June, 1964. It is world's finest comics, 142, which is the first appearance of composite Superman. Now, just that alone, seeing the, on the cover is this half Superman, half Batman, crazy looking character that is, I I mean, you got to go look at the cover. There are subsequent, subsequent covers with this character on it that are all also very good. However, this one being the first written by Jack Schiff art by Kurt Swan. Uh, so the art is, is fantastic anyway. So this book is retailing for like, you can get a nice copy. There it is. Wow. You can get a nice copy for Literally 10 bucks right now. I'm looking at it on eBay. Uh, nice. you can you can get a really nice copy, like a near mint copy for 70 bucks on eBay. Now, wow. if you're interested, I, I think that this is a character that that could become kind of popular. I, I know that DC is definitely looking at expanding on you know how to bring back and with Mark Wade. Uh, in control of world's finest. This is another world's finest character that is, you know, in the, in the history in the lore of, of Spider-Man or excuse me, of Superman and Batman. A- anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't come back, but I also am just saying this is a really freaking cool character from the silver age you can get for really cheap. Uh, I'd look into the character uh, and see if that's something that uh, that's something you're looking for or interested in. But I also could see this as a formidable villain that they could resurrect at some point. So it's a little bit of a long shot, but we don't do a lot of DC books in speculation too often. So I wanted to throw this out there because it was one that I just was intrigued by. I just think it's real zany, man. It's the, the yeah. silver age zaniness. I know, the but they got to do something. They got to embrace the zaniness at some point. They never, they're so dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the thing that I like about it is I'm sure it was one of those things where it's like, you know, Batman and Superman have to think together because they can't beat them individually or something. Right. To that mm-hmm. extent, I'm sure they could bring that forward and make it more modern, a modern version of that. Uh, is that, I don't think that's the only time, but I mean, we've seen, I mean, like Bizarro, Bizarro is a, a character that is really weird and they still figured out how to put him in cartoons and other places. Uh, and I would say that's just as zany as this guy. So yeah, I mean, I like it. I do remember this guy being in justice league unlimited and that episode was really cool. So, so yeah, I, I like, that is such a deep cut. I, I respect the hell out of it. Like that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, deep I, cuts only deep tracks only. I, I told you I was bringing it on this one. Uh, I'm kidding, but it but it's the book, right? Like it's not me. Don't I don't deserve any of the credit. It's all the book. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's what I've gotten. That that actually is going to do it on this episode of Spectales. Before we leave, Jenna, I know we mentioned kind of where people can find you a little bit as far as listening to your show on Phase Zero. Uh, but where, what's your handles? Where can people get in contact with you if they want to talk to you a little bit more about what you do? 
Yeah. So I'm on basically every social media at Hey, it's Jenna Lynn. That's how you can find me on Twitter, Instagram. I don't post on there nearly as much, but Twitter is kind of my biggest time suck. Um, Mm -hmm. But so yeah, you can find me there. Um, Phase zero is at youtube.com slash phase zero. We're uploading videos every day between podcast episodes and other little content that we have. And then just check out comicbook.com. If you're looking between Monday and Friday after 2 p.m. on a day, odds are you probably will see an article that I've written. So (laughs) you can you can check out my stuff there. And the content is all fantastic. Everybody should definitely be going and reading. And just in general, comicbook.com is a wonderful resource that I use almost every day. Awesome. All right. Uh, If you want to find Jesus and I, uh, you can check the show notes. We have our email in there. But if you'd like to contact us with your Grail Tale or anything else you may have a question about, you can reach out to us at spectalespodcast at gmail.com. Or you can find us on social media at spec underscore tales underscore podcast is our Instagram. And Twitter is at spectalespod. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a good week. (laughs) 